Hi, and welcome to the Songwriter Sessions. I'm your host, Ryan Smith. Today in the program, we have a singer and guitarist from one of Boston's best rock and roll outfits, Rival Island. Tommy is joining us in the studio today to play some songs and also talk about some of his music as well. And Tommy's going to kick us off with their song, Blown to Bits. I'm a rolling stone. Fell in love outside of your city. Little baby never gonna miss me. Get down rolling long. No matter what she says. You wanna make that money? You do it on your own. Well, I'm a nowhere baby. Here I'm a rolling stone. You didn't come from nothing. You're not built for this. Babe, there's nothing to it. Fell in love outside of this city. Little baby never gonna miss me. Get down, rolling long, no matter what she says. You wanna make that money? You do it on your own. Well, I'm nowhere, baby. Yeah, I'm a rolling stone. You didn't come from nothing. You're not built for this. Cause I'm so Thank you very much, Tommy. I appreciate you coming on the show. Thanks for having me. So I want to jump right into things. Um, how did Rival Island come to be? Rival Island came to be, um, let's see, me and Joey were in a band together for about a year. And we would join with two other guys under a different name. And we kind of, um, for whatever reason, we branched off into a new direction, a new musical kind of um, arena. And uh, we started working with pro uh, producer Tom Ionello. He's, uh, he's worked with a lot of bands. He's worked with Transit and um, you know, a lot of local and national acts. And we, something happened over the summer in the studio. We kind of laid down a few tracks, and they were good. Like, we were very happy with the, with the way it was sounding. So one thing led to another. We released um, the first four-song EP in September, and we re-released uh, this new one, the Deluxe Edition, excuse me, in November with a few new tracks and um, it's kind of just been rolling from there. It's one of those things that kind of, I always hear people say organically and I think that's like an overused word but I can't think of anything <laughs> better than organically. It just kind of flowed into each other. So um, yeah, it happened in the studio, I guess. So, so the record you're talking about is, is Look to the Sun. It is. Uh, this is the album here. So what, what's in the name? Where did Rival Island come from? We <laughs> we had a bad name before, and we that was one of the big things we needed to change. So we um, we got together one day, and we were going over names, and I honestly I don't think anyone could actually tell you for sure who came up with it. 
someone said it, and we were like, that's the name. We instantly Googled it, and we're like, please, God, no one else <laughs> have this name, because we must have went through 25 names that day that we ended, we started off loving, and then 10 minutes later, we hated it. And but it, this, someone said it, and we were like, that's the name, that's it, Google it, lock it up, and I, I, I don't even know what it means. And we we kind of, like, Joey has a certain look. He, uh, he's like, a, he's a grungy guy. He's a very grungy man. I don't think I'm a grungy man. It's kind of like opposites. Symmetrical differences, if you will. Sure. And you know, there's a lot of things, a lot, <laughs> a lot of ways you can play off it. But um, we just—it was the name. We just knew. So when you got into the studio and started recording that stuff, and, and you, you know, you were like, "This sounds good." Um, what were your intentions? Were you like, were you setting up to sound like something, or did you just want to? Was it kind of just messing around in the studio, or? I think we always try to, as. When I write a song, I'm always trying, I don't want to say mimic or copy, but like I have an idea in mind. I have a song I heard that made me write it. So the way these ones came about is I kind of was listening to 90s rock, singers, songwriters, stuff. It was acoustic based, what I was influenced by, but the way it came out, it sounds like a really, it's a rock record. So we kind of went in with the Oasis, uh, Tom Petty, th that kind of genre of music. and. Our, our producer, Tom Ionello, he's very, he's punk pop influenced. That's not, he, it's not all he can do, but you know, th that's his kind of sound. And when we started hearing these songs, it was like, you, the, the 90s, you know, it was still there, but it was a different kind of 90s. It was, I was hearing Green Day, I was hearing Blink, I, but at the end of the day, it was still us. And right. that is what meant the most to me. Like, w we had influences, but you know, at the end of the day, it sounds like a Rival Island record, and that's what we wanted. You know. and I, yeah, I think you can definitely, from the songs that I've heard, you can hear the influences of uh, Oasis or mm -hmm. Tom Petty that yep. are in there. But it's definitely a unique sound and definitely one that's unique to Boston as well. Yeah. Um, so talk about that recording process a little bit. So you, so you, have, you have the record here. What, what, is, what was that process like? It was, it was, <laughs> it was good. It was long. Um, I'm trying to, it kind of went by in a blur. It, it was, see, I've never recorded any record like this, like laying down the drums first and like how you're supposed to record a record, <laughs> basically. I was just doing it on my own flyby. So when we were in the studio with an actual producer who knew, who knew what he was doing, it was a very organized, cathartic experience. And that's the best way I can describe it. Um, but I didn't really know exactly what we had until I started hearing the first actual mix. You know, because before the rough cuts, you really don't know what it is. There's no amps, there's no, there's no reverb, there's really nothing. It's just raw. And then I started hearing, you know, the, the first pass, or the second pass of the mix. I said, hold on, like this is something sure. else. I didn't know this was what, how it was going to sound. So it was, um, it was an emotional experience. <laughs> it was happy, sad. There were fights. There were, there were happy times. We went to Whole Foods a lot for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, can, I remember that. But, um, it was good. It was it was actually a really fun thing, and it, it kind of flew by. And by the time it was out, I was like, I can't believe it's already done. Well, it's it's a good finished product, and I've had the chance to listen through it, and it, and it is it is very good. Uh, and we're actually going to hear two more tracks off it right now. Uh, the first will be "Let Me Go On," and followed up by "Fell in Love at a Graveyard." All right. Just let me go on, just let me go on, just let me go on, just let me go on. They take any gave right back to you. What they take any gave right back to you. I'm already gone. 
let me go on. Just 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 let me go now. Just let me go now. Just let me go on. Just let me go. to the sun fell in love at the graveyard we never told anyone we waited till we were dying yeah yeah to fall in love with the sun um i kind of wanted to, to jump into the songwriting aspect of the things because mm -hmm. you know when i listen to the songs that are on this record it's it's not a lot of superficial things that you might hear in some of the uh, in in some records. It seems there's a lot that's going on with the songwriting. There's a lot of layers. So, what does your songwriting process look like? <laughs> My best songs, honestly, I I really I very rarely remember writing them. I, I, they kind of just write themselves. It's you got to be in a weird state of like I've never actually like sat down and tried to write a song. I have, and they come out horrible because right. you're not writing anything. You're just trying to write a song. So it's one of those weird things like you you kind of fall into a creative arena and you fall out of it and they, they the songs almost write themselves and they come to you. It's not something you own if that makes any sense. Yeah. Like I can't sit down and write a I don't think anyone has that power. Dylan did it for a little while, but then he lost <laughs> it too. Right. You know what I mean? Um, it's it's the perfect combination. You hear something you like on the radio. Something happens to you in life that you, it's like you have to become hypersensitive to life and 
if you're lucky, you'll have a guitar next to you. And, and it's it like comes. lightning in a bottle. You have to catch it. Sometimes you catch it, sometimes you don't. So for you, is it something where you go and um, it's words first, or is it you, you'll pick up and start strumming on some chords and say, this works with this, or this is an idea that I had, and now that I'm playing the guitar, this works, or is it kind of catch as catch can and um, whatever works at that moment? It usually starts with a chord progression. I don't really ever write lyrics without a tune. Just because I wouldn't know how... It would be. A, it would look it like poetry to me. It would be like A B A B, and there would be no rhythm. And I, would, I kind of hear the music, and then in my head, words come out, and they, <laughs> somehow they work. I don't <laughs> so once you, so once you have the words, and you know, words, and then you playing along, talk mm -hmm. about what it, what it is with with Joe and how he comes into the whole mix, and when you start to look at arrangements of the. Joey's a uh, very unique drummer in, in in this sense. I don't have. I I don't till this day have never had to recommend, tell him, or even suggest where to go with it. He just knows. I don't know if that's, I don't know if you teach that, I don't know if you learn that, I, I don't, I'm not a drummer, I have no idea. But he, he gets it like that. I don't know why, <laughs> he just does. If he, if he didn't, I don't know, it wouldn't be good. Makes it an easier process It makes for it you easier overall. for me, because I don't know the first thing about drums. I wouldn't know what, it, I, I know what I like in my head, and he's very good at naturally feeling it out. He knows what I'm trying to do, and he, gets it quick, you know, he, he, he really does. So, and, and when, you, when you're making these records, you're, you're making your full rock and roll sound, mm -hmm. but I know uh, over the past couple of months, there's been a few performances you've done that have been yeah. on, an, on an acoustic side. Sure. What's, the, what's the differences there <laughs> when you look at taking your, when you look, listen to the songs that are on the record um, that, are, that are full and loud and then stripping them down to where it's you and Joey doing the, doing the acoustic thing? It's a weird experience because you don't have, it's, it's, a different energy. It can't be all adrenaline with an acoustic guitar and, and, and light drums. It just can't be. So you really have to figure out how to respect the acoustic guitar in the sense like you can't play full chord, like not full chords, but bar chords, and you can't, it's not a party. It's not a rage. It's just, and we, we're fortunate enough where like our songs you can play acoustically. You just kind of have to, um, Give them a little bit different. Yeah, you have to respect. <laughs> you have to respect what you're doing in the, sure. in the sense that, like, it's just a different mindset. It really is. Like, because if I was going crazy and Joey was going crazy on, it would just be noise, and people would most likely leave the establishment wherever we were. So um, it's different. It, it's di it's different. It's not better or worse. It's just you know, some people prefer the acoustic stuff. I, I fell in love with the graveyard. Translates very well to acoustics, and some people say they like it better. I don't know. That. Well, they'll have to check you out live to see if Yeah, you can. have to check us out live, so come. <laughs> All right, so we're going to jump into a, uh, another song here. Uh, and this one coming up is uh, called Don't My Molly. Mm -hmm. Makes 
Tommy, I'd like to thank you once again for coming on the program here. Um, and as we as we near the end, uh, what's what's next for you guys? What's coming up? What's on the horizon? Um, a lot of stuff. We have a we're in the process of, of booking like you know a ton of spring dates. Um, we have a video being released on Valentine's Day. It's actually the Tom Petty song "You Got Lucky." We went and had it. Uh, we were gonna originally cover a Nirvana song, and we got in the studio, and Tom was Tom Einel was just like, "You get just hear me out." Do a petty song. I don't know why, but he's. He said, Do, you got lucky. We did it. This came out. I'm very happy with the way it came out. I wish I wrote it. It was the only thing that like really bothered me. <laughs> but, but, um, but yeah, so we have a, a video being released on February 14th. It's the Tom Petty "You Got Lucky," and uh, just a, a, a bunch of spring dates. We're currently in the process of booking, so we don't have you know the, the sheets in front of us. But you, we will let you. You, it will be obvious. Cause we'll so where, where can people find out more information about Rival Island? Um, you can, there's a couple things. You can go to the Facebook, which is facebook.com slash Rival Island, or you can go to rivalisland.com. Or we have a few things on YouTube right now, a few videos you can check out, and, you know, that's all the stuff. Awesome. Right there. Well, the record is called Look to the Sun, uh, and it's available now on iTunes, Spotify, yep. um, anywhere really you can get music online. Um, and as you alluded to, you're going to take us out with the song uh, You Got Lucky. Absolutely. By Again, thank you for coming on the program. Thanks for having me. Um, this is Tommy from uh, Rival Island, and we'll take it out with You Got Lucky. All right. You better watch what you say. You better watch what you do to me. Don't get carried away. Girl, if you can do better than me, go. Yeah, go. Remember, a good love is hard to find. A good love is hard to find. You got lucky, baby. You got lucky, baby. When I found you. The only thing you can really do at the end of the day is compare a guy to his contemporaries. Right. It's hard to compare Brady to Terry Bradshaw. The game was different in the 70s than it is now. They've won something like 15 or 16 more games than any other team in the NFL yep. in that span of time. Luck looks like an NFL quarterback. Um, I remember I called everyone I knew when they, when they uh, traded for Garnett. Um, that was just one of the most amazing things of my life. <laughs> if John Farrell could fix John Lester, then your pitching problem is partially solved. Kareem had that one unstoppable shot, the sky hook, and he milked it for, what, 35,000 points or something like that. Just, again, versatility, Mr. Patriot. Yeah. If you needed something, he's going to get it done. I am to this show as Alec Baldwin is to SNL. So. <laughs> this is the infamous Jason Veritek shoves uh, his glove yes. right into Alex Rodriguez's face. <laughs>